Welcome everyone, today we have 10 new glitches for Super Mario Maker 2. Today we go over how you can place an enemy with a parachute and a key on a rail, which is super sweet. We also cover how to place upside down P-switches, so D-switches, without a ceiling on top of it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know you want to. Without further ado, let's dive in. So here's the setup. These blocks are going to blow up, and this Koopa is going to flip over and land over on the middle of this platform. Now when he wakes up, you'll actually get damaged by him if you try to jump on him at the right time. Like that. Why, Nintendo, why? You think that you would just jump off of the Koopa, but no, he actually hurts you. So in this little setup right here, Toad is going to run over to the right, and then he's going to jump up in this gap and when he does this spiny is going to fall onto this note block and smush these cannons over to the left now the funny thing about this is that it doesn't crush you you actually get stuck in the cannon so you clip into the cannon itself so i'm going to run forward and jump up into that space and i get clipped into the cannons it should crush me but no i'm just stuck here here's an example of some really really strange hitboxes in mario maker 2 so if I go over to the right, that spiny is going to fall down, of course, and you'd think that it's going to hurt you, but it does not. You can actually stand in the top half of his hitbox without getting hurt, which is pretty interesting to me. I thought it would hurt me. I thought it would straight up kill me, but apparently it doesn't. You are invincible to the spiny. Did you know that using that clown car and that bullet bill blaster over to the right you can actually clip through that bumper. All you really have to do is hold right. So after I exit this door right here, I'm going to hold right, and the blaster is just going to push me through eventually and let me go on with my life. Into the door. Here's a funny little setup. So as Big Toad here, I'm going to duck jump into that little gap, and I will be able to hit the tape line and finish the level. Usually when you're stuck in this duck form after the goal, you're stuck there, but here you're not. He goes, peace out, and falls straight down this hole, which is super funny. Did you know that if you jump on a Goomba that's on top of a Thwomp as it's falling, the Thwomp will actually slam on thin air and then go back to its original location? We're going to use iframes to help us out with this a little bit as we jump off of this ledge and kind of just float in the air through the Thwomp. We hit the Goomba, and the Thwomp slams the air. Why does it do that? Here we have an interesting little hyperspeed setup scenario using a POW wave and all of these coins above these note blocks. The POWs are going to activate and the coins are going to drop one after another and that's going to put us into a hyperspeed form. We're going to go into the door and show you what I mean. It's going to warp me to the left really fast. And then pop me above the note block to boot. Pretty cool setup. Oddly enough, if this sun is placed right here or lower in the sub area, it will disappear if you place Toad all the way up here and start the scene. Where did it go? My theory is that it went down underneath the screen and despawned because if I take the sun and lift it up one more tile, you're going to see it spawn and then go up into the top left of the screen like normal, but it's going to come from the water, which is very strange. So it does spawn that time, but it does appear over here. So apparently in the subworld, if you spawn the sun from above the screen lock, it will spawn it a couple blocks lower, which is very strange. Using a black hole, we can actually put an enemy on a rail that has a key and a parachute, which is usually not possible. So we're going to use kind of like a G Game Genie Tech, GGT. Grab a rail, copy it, and then put an enemy on it. Delete the rail, copy the rail, the original one, into the black hole. Undo twice. Then you're going to have to move the black hole away from the rail to grab it and pull it out of there. And when you do, the enemy goes over here. Now I can take this enemy off of this rail, and then I can mess with him. So I can add a key. I can put a parachute on him. And then add a key. And then when I copy this rail, it's going to go back over to the rail again. Like that. And so now what we have is an enemy that has a key and it also has a parachute and he's on a rail, which is normally not possible. 
So if I start the scene, you'll see the parachute chilling like that. He's throwing a hammer. If I knock him off the rail, he's not actually going to retain this parachute. He loses it right away. It's still visually cool. And then, of course, if I kill him, I get the key, and I can move on with my life. Now I'm going to go ahead and create an upside-down P-switch without a ceiling. We're going to use the Game Genie check to do this. Draw a track. Copy it over here. Drag a P-switch onto it. And delete the track. Copy the track over to the black hole. Undo twice. Grab the track out of there. Place an upside down pipe. Place the P switch into the pipe. Delete the bottom two because we don't need those. And then drag this out of here. So what we have now is it's a P switch that's upside down that thinks it's on a rail. But we don't need to keep it on that rail. We can undraw that rail right there. And now we have an upside down P switch. Which can be used for not much, but it does look cool. And we can call it a D switch. When we start the scene, it kind of just flips upside down and acts like normal. Pretty cool nonetheless.